Hello, this is Dr. Mish, and today we are going to be learning about tangents. We are also going to be learning about a line that is normal to the curve. First, a real-world situation. In the Olympics and in other areas of cycling, um, a cyclist travels in a circle arena, and what happens is they start getting faster and faster, and they start leaning. And so this can be applied with how much can a cyclist lean in without falling off. In order for a cyclist to move in a circular path, a certain force is required to keep him from shooting or her from shooting away from the circle. The force is perpendicular to the tangent to the curve from a circular path. What does that all mean? Let's look at this picture below. So here is the curve and here is the tangent line. The tangent line is a line that touches the curve. Then we have the perpendicular line. So this is your cyclist really cycling on that circular path. This is called normal to the curve. This dotted line is perpendicular to this solid line. And we get the solid line by coming in, touching the curve, and coming back out. What are we going to be doing with this? Well, first example one, we're going to be finding the gradient of the line at the particular point that it touches the curve, which is the tangent line. So we're going to first be finding this gradient. We're going to be finding this line that touches this curve. Here is our curve. So we're going to be finding the gradient. When they ask you to find the gradient, you're going to take the derivative. Okay, before we can take the derivative, and if you want to watch my video about taking derivatives, you can go back. I have one on it. Um, but So before we take the derivative, we need to get this square root of x first, the square root symbol we need to get rid of, and we need to get it out of the denominator. Remember, when we get rid of a square root symbol, what we have to do is we have to locate the exponent, which is 1, and the root, which is a square root, so that's 2. And so this is going to become x to the 1 half. So let's just rewrite that really quick. f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x to the 1 half. Now what we have to do is get it out of the denominator. When we get it out of the denominator and we bring it up to the numerator, what happens? That's right, the exponent turns negative. So we're going to have x squared minus 4 times x to the negative 1 half. Now that we have the square root gone and our variable is in the numerator, we can take the derivative. So f prime of x equals, this is a 1, 2 times 1 is 2, x, 2 minus 1 is 1, and we don't even need to write that one, so I'm going to erase it. The next one, negative 1 half times negative 4 is a positive 2, so plus 2. x, we need to do one, negative 1 half minus 1, and that's going to be a negative 3 over 2. Some people like to write this as negative 1.5, that's fine, but I'm going to leave it as a fraction. All right, so now let's actually find the gradient of the tangent to f of x at the point where x equals 4. So here they're asking you, use the gradient, which is the derivative, and substitute the 4 into there. So we have f prime of 4 equals 2 times 4 plus 2 times 4 raised to the negative 3 over 2 power. And I'm going to put parentheses around that. And we could do this in our calculator. So f prime of 4 equals, I'm going to get our calculator, clear this out. Okay, we're going to do 2 times 4 plus 2 times 4 raised to the negative 3 divided by 2. Please realize that I did keep that in parentheses. There is a negative there, and I got an answer of 8.25. I actually want to turn that into a fraction, so I'm going to press the, this button. It says math. It's below the green button here, so math. I want to make it into a fraction, so I'm going to press the number 1. It asks me, do you want to take this answer and turn it into a fraction? I press enter, and I get 33 over 4. So I actually, so I got that point. So where x equals 4, that's my x. My f of x, or f prime of x, is going to be 33 over 4. We have a nice point. They gave us the x. We found the f prime of x of that point. So we took the derivative. We used the derivative. We substituted the x value in. We found the f prime of x value. Okay, example 2. We need to find the coordinates of the points on the graph. f of x equals 1 third x cubed minus 1 half x squared minus 8x plus 7, where the gradient is 4. 
So they're giving us the slope. They're giving us the gradient is 4. Slope is 4. In our last one, they gave us the x value as 4. Okay, now they're giving you the slope is 4. And we, want, we are going to be finding points, coordinates of points. So this is a multi-step problem that I'm going to walk you through. So let's do it step by step. So step one, we actually need to find the gradient. And how we find a gradient is you got it, take the derivative. Seems to be our first step. D R I V A T I V E. Sorry about that. Okay, take the derivative. So f of x equals, I'm just going to rewrite this over, 1 third x cubed minus 1 half x squared minus 8x plus 7. The derivative f prime of x equals, so 3 times 1 third turns to 1. 1x, 3 minus 1 squared. 2 times negative 1 half, negative 1. x, 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 8, this is really a 1, everybody. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. 1 minus 1 is 0. That drops out. 7 is a constant. That drops out as well. So we could rewrite this as f prime of x equals x squared minus x minus 8. I like that. The one, all the 1s disappear, which cleans it up. And this is why 1s disappear, because it cleans our, our whole entire equation up. So we found the gradient f prime of x. Okay, what's step two? Since we have the gradient, this is the gradient, step two is to set equation equal to four. And the reason why I'm doing that, f prime of x, the slope, which is the gradient, which is f of x, this is the gradient, they said is 4. So I have to remove this f of x and in its place put a 4. Okay? So step 3. Guess what's going to have to happen? We're going to have to solve for x because we need coordinates. And when we need coordinates, we're going to be getting an x and a y. So right now we're finding x. So we have to solve. So step 3 solve for x. So 4 equals x squared minus x minus 8. We need to subtract 4 because when we solve, we need this equation set equal to 0. We're going to be doing some factoring here. So when we do our factoring, we are going to be needing, sorry, we're going to be needing to find two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to negative 1. So 0 equals x minus 4 times x plus 3. Negative 4 times 3 gives us a negative 12. Negative 4 plus 3 gives us a negative 1. So now we can set these both equal to 0. 0 equals x minus 4. 0 equals x plus 3. And add 4 to both sides. So we get x equals 4 minus 3 from both sides, and x equals negative 3. So we, oops, I'm sorry, right here, plus 4, minus 3. We have our x values. We, so we have our two x values. So right now, we know that our coordinates, we're going to have our 4, 1 has an x value of 4, and 1 has an x value of negative 3. And so we're going to have to find the f of x values. Okay, so you're right, we have to do some substitution. We have x, we need to find f of x. And so this is where it says find the points on the graph. They said this graph. So we have to go back to this graph. We have our x values and we're gonna have to substitute them in. And so that's gonna be our last step. Step four, go back to the original function and substitute x. 
substitute both x's. Okay, so let's do it. F of x equals, we had one third x cubed plus one half x squared minus eight x plus seven. And so I'm going to first substitute foreign. So F of four equals one third four cubed plus one half four squared minus eight times four plus seven. I am not going to put this into my calculator right now because I do have the answer, but you could just turn it on exactly like you see it with the parentheses and the exponent. And what you're going to get, F of four equals negative 35 over four. And so if you want the decimal approximation here, negative 35 over four, is going to be negative 8.75. So if you came out with your calculator as negative 8.75, because I would like you to try that, um, then that's good. In the fraction, oh, not 35 over 4, I'm sorry. Yes, my first erase, I've been trying better to erase. It's 35 over 2, everybody. Negative 35 divided by 2, and that's going to be negative 17.5. Much better. Okay, negative 35 over 2. Um, so if you got negative 17.5 in the calculator, um, that does approx that does go back to the exact value of negative 35 over 2. So you could use the, it just depends on what your teacher wants. Um, I know IB likes to use the fraction, so I'm just going to replace, put this negative 35 over 2. So here's our first point, our first coordinate. Let's get the second one. So we're doing the same thing. F of negative 3 equals one third times negative three cubed plus one half times negative three squared minus eight times negative three plus seven. Making sure I have everything correct. Please make sure your parentheses are around the negative three and that you're doing a negative three. And when you put this into the calculator, you are gonna get positive 35 over two, which equates to 17, positive 17.5, which is kind of cool. Um, and we're going to be replacing 35 over 2 right here, place that right here. So we have our second point. Okay, so what did we do? What was this whole entire thing? Just to recap, first they asked us to find coordinates. So we're looking for x's and f of x's. So we need coordinates. They gave us a curve. They gave us a function. They told us the slope is 4. The gradient is 4. Once you see that gradient, we did step one. We found the gradient because we know we need to use it by taking the derivative. Here's the gradient. F of prime of x equals x squared minus x minus 8. Since they told us that the gradient is 4, we have to exchange the f prime of x with the number 4 because they told us that's what it was. Once we have that, we have a nice equation. We can actually now go through and start finding the x value of the coordinates. We did that by solving for x. We got two values. We have two points. So we took these two values, we went back to the original function, and we substituted. We substituted the 4, and we got negative 35 over 2, one point. We substituted the negative 3, and we got 35 over 2, another point. And so we found our two points. This has been Dr. Mears. This is the, the two, only two examples that I'm doing. We found the coordinates, took some gradients. Hope it helped.